All right, so I I did figure it out. We are ha we do have a leak. Vroom! What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Revline 89. So today we're going out to the Mustang, and we are going to be installing the Idle Chop mod on off switch line into the cab. Oh, here we go. I'm telling you guys, this is why you got to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. You just do not know what I'm going to come up with for the builds that we're working on. Alright, to be quite honest, I don't know where those go to, but we pressed on a little hole here and it popped open right down in here. So, yeah, whatever, that's going to work out great. So now we just pull our line, we run the line up through. And we connect it, just like this. Okay. And now what I'll do is I will then stick these together. All right, so now we connect this line to the clear and we wanna make sure we get that in there pretty far. That looks like about as far as it's gonna go. All right. Now we can go ahead and run it back over here. We can push it back down in. We don't need as much. Want to have it some slack, but not too much slack. So that looks like a good curve. You know, it's slack enough that it's not going to pull too tight. Um, it's on top, so it's away. It's furthest from the manifold, from the headers. So it is a higher temp. So we'll check on it, should be fine, the temperature, and of course over through here and all this is not that high. So yeah, we now, see right in there, we now can go ahead, take this part. We may end up cutting it smaller, um, we'll see. So we got all this tubing now. So now all I have to do is cut this tubing um, to size, because we got so much and run it all right before we put it on this is what it looks like um so this is our setup brought to you by revline 89 the original one who came up with this setup um so yeah we're not going to mount it over there now we're just going to mount it right up in here by the way i never knew this but right here it says fuel reset what in the world is that for to reset your your fuel pump or something i never knew that was there Leave a comment if you guys know what exactly the purpose of that is, because it's a it's a button inside there. Okay, um, I'm gonna mount this and we'll see how it works. Oh man, we are done. That's right. D O N E done. It's installed. I have not turned it over yet because I want you guys to be the first to hear it fail or succeed. So can you guys see it? I'll give you a couple seconds here. Do you guys see? You know, we're standing from about this distance. You guys see the system? All right. You see it yet? How about now? You guys see the system? There she is, right there. And when you go back, you can see the entire setup. It's a little dark, so I don't know if you can see the exact setup. But this valve right here stays on all the time that is um, the idle chop so that stays on all the time and then right here this is how we control it for the chop or normal so when we have this turned on we don't that means we have no idle chop when we just simply do this that means we get the idle chop so when we turn the valve air is sucked from here and also the idle chop when we turn it off, the valve closed. No air comes from this one at all and only from the idle chop one. We also have this little filter here. That way it doesn't suck in any unwanted 
debris or anything like that. So just like that. And we also could put some other filter. So we're gonna keep it um, on. Now this, with this on, that means it's gonna idle normal. So we're gonna start the car up, let it idle normal. And then I'm gonna show you guys live turning this like that and the idle chop should work in all theory. So with the filter sticking down, you can't see it from that angle. I mean, you can see it a little bit when you're down low, but from a normal person angle, if you don't really know what you're looking at, if you wouldn't know that the system's there and you're just looking at the car, you would think, oh yeah, nothing different. If you know cars or know the S197, you would think, oh, that's out of the ordinary. Then when you get closer, you realize what it is. So yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's clean up and then we will show you guys the first start. Okay, so one final overview. Here you guys see it. So the only thing is this line runs right there. It's that simple. And another thing with this cap being open, it will actually help a little heat come out the sides of it. Not much or anything, but a little bit helps. All right, without wasting any more time, let's do this. Okay, keep in mind, we're hopping in the driver's seat. So just like this, you know, if we're in the driver's seat, we reach down and once I get used to the valve, we just turn it to the side I think I mounted it strong enough that it won't come loose when we keep turning it. So, just like that. Doesn't affect anything, you know, your leg room, you can go as high as you want, doesn't affect anything. All right, so, it should start and idled normal because we have it turned open. So it should start up, everything should be fine. Yep, not a single, not a single rough start or anything. Actually, I can kind of hear, let's see, I can kind of hear uh, it pulling air through this filter. So you can hear that little hiss. That could get annoying. We might have to get um, an actual, another filter. I mean, you just hear the sucking of the air. So if we get like a sponge filter, um, you won't hear that. It's just because it's like a straw in a way, but you barely can hear that. So yeah, idle normal, normal, idle, here we go. Let's see how this works. Here we go. All right, so that actually stalled it. It may have been too much of a direct cutoff. Maybe if we go slower with turning it, let's see if we got the chop. if the temperature is let's reset our gauge here if it's warmed up enough but you still got that chop so we got the chop going on and one like I said once it warms up more you'll have more of a chop It's still, I mean, it's still only 104 degrees, so the ECT, so, you know, once that gets up to, I would say, probably 125, 135, then the RPMs will be lower, and once it gets up to 180, then it should get the full chop, so we'll just let it idle a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this, open this up, and listen. So just like that, idle chop is gone. But yeah, you do hear that air. So that's something we didn't hear before. So we will test that out. Let's see if we slowly change this. Okay. So by slowly changing it, 
it did not stall and the idle chop came back by turn slowly turning it off um, but another thing I do want to point out to go from the idle chop we can quickly quickly change it as fast as we can um, I think if the RPMs are higher and we change it it won't be any issue now see just like that so if we're driving I think it's just because when you're at an idle and you quick change it it's just too much of a quick change so we can change it back to normal just like that but when you're let's see if it stalls again but when you are at a idle and you quick change it it kills it okay so that's good to know set this so basically it looks like but I think we can quick change it if the rpms are just a little bit on the gas so if we're in traffic all we have to do is put you know hold one foot on the brake and a little bit on the gas and that should be able to quickly change it yep yep no problem so yeah it's just because of the low idle speed that we have set that's why it kills it when we quick change it but if we give a, just a little bit gas and get the RPMs up, we can quickly change it or if we slowly change it. So let's go back to normal idle. So, or we can just, you know, without even giving it any gas or any idle, we can slowly change it over. Yep, see, just like that, without any gas or anything. So RPMs are still warming up, probably because we keep messing with it. We're about 131 temperature wise it's like I said it's real cold out here but looks like the idle chop is coming more so yeah overall we got it um, and when you're driving the hum of the filter well obviously you don't hear it when the idle chops on only when it's not on so let's do this Yeah, I mean it's a little annoying. You can you can definitely hear it. So I think what I'll do. All right. So like I said, you know if we're in um, tra let's say we're stuck in traffic, we can either slowly turn that over, turn it you know the idle chop on, or we can press the brake with one foot, slowly give a little gas. And I'll show you you know the RPMs. So you can see the RPMs. Slowly give it a little gas and change it over and just like that now we're at the idle chop so two options you know slowly do it which slowly doing it's no big issue or just simply quickly do it and of course changing back you can quickly do it without any issues when changing it and it, you can even do it slowly you know turning it with having a little gas as well either way no problem so yeah we got it working like I said the only thing that's annoying is this filter when it's the auto chop is not on that's the only annoying sound that you're gonna get so we're gonna mess with that see what we can do with that but I'm very happy we now have an on and off switch Let's go ahead and uh, check the idle speed here, see if it's warmed up enough. So I was able to muffle it a little bit um, by putting, so by putting the uh, regular EGR filter over the cap but you still can hear it not as bad um, but yeah you can still hear it so you know if you're cruising or something it's not gonna be any louder but basically what it sounds like it sounds like a little bit static coming from a radio so if we have our radio on or something or if we're driving you know the exhaust quickly quickly overpowers it but if it does, you know, gets annoying or something, then what I'll just do 
is we'll rig up another free flow filter so yeah this is with the idle chop normal let's go ahead just one last demonstration of slowly we're not so our gap our foot's not on the gas so we're going to slowly convert it to the other chop and i'll be quiet So it, did, it was close to stalling. What I noticed, it gets close to stalling when you slowly turn it over. It doesn't stall, but it gets close. So probably a good. Probably a good rule of thumb would be to, for me to have a, my foot on the gas just enough. Just enough to, you know, be extra cautious. This is in drive. Let's turn it on to normal because it's not um, the greatest turning the idle chop off. Well, let me see. So when the idle chop's on and you turn it off, I think it struggles a little bit to start. At least, well, let's find out. That started pretty good. But it's probably better to keep the idle chop off when you start the car. I love this, just like that. All right, guys, now, finally we go to the road test and car wash all right so road test only like a five minute if that drive to the car wash um so yeah you know it works great um i don't chop fine So basically that was pointless. It's such a sunny day. I don't feel like drying it off. So it's gonna get spots as soon as it sits and dries, even when we go for a drive, but oh well, at least going to the gas station, it'll look wet and nice for the, for the first 10 minutes until it's parked. You'll get those white spots all over again. So when you don't dry off your vehicle, no matter what you do, you're gonna get those spots. So she survived the run, the drive. Here's the idle chop after driving. It's not as aggressive as I actually would like. Um, not as aggressive as before. All right, so I I did figure it out. We are ha we do have a leak. All right, we drilled a hole just big enough for um, our little tube here. So after further investigation, even putting my hand and completely blocking off the EGR, um, it's pulling air from somewhere else, somewhere out of my control. So this is the best we're probably gonna get. Man, so after all is said and done, um, with testing a lot of the stuff, 
So apparently there's nothing I really can do to get more of an idle chop than what I got. So that's what I got. I'm half thinking, and now this is just thinking, I don't know if it's true or not. Maybe we are causing too much um, pressure. Maybe we should allow a little more air into the line instead of blocking the vacuum pressure because for example it's coming from somewhere it's pulling some air from somewhere else that's out of my control it's not through the line it's not through the valves it's not even through the EGR hole not even through the metal around there blocking that off because what I did was I put my whole hand against the entire thing completely blocked off the EGR and it still um, idled with the idle chop so that leaves to tell me that it's getting air, it's pulling air from somewhere else. So I'm thinking what if we block it off but allow it some air, maybe it'll give it more of a chop? Um, I don't know, so that's, I'll play with that some other day. But for now, we got the idle chop, you know, everything works great. Um, it's just, I really want more aggressive and I think we can get more aggressive. I'm hoping we can get even more aggressive. I'm greedy, I know, I got the V6 Mustang to chop, but I'm so greedy, I want more, you know, um, so we'll test some theories out in the future, but for now, everything's working great, we got it running, we got the chop, not as much of a aggressive rumble as I want, maybe I can't get any more than that, um, I shouldn't complain because that is pretty cool for a 4.0. V6 Mustang, so I really shouldn't be complaining, I really shouldn't be wanting more, but I want more, so we're going to be testing, testing my other theory out, maybe giving it a little more vacuum, but still blocking it off a little bit, we'll see, we'll see what happens, alright guys, subscribe!